Just about 7.52. Uh, welcome back. Paige and Dr. Paul time. And uh, Dr. Paul is here. And the snow just started outside here in downtown. Did you see any on your way in not, today? No, not yet. Nothing? Uh, this is uh, National Non-Smoking Week. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the time of year when uh, people who quit smoking at uh, New Year's, they're, they're having the struggle right now. That's right. Right? Yeah. There's all kinds of, and you and I were just talking about this, all kinds of incentives out sure. there. Yeah, sure. Your health is one. There's a, you can win cars, and mm -hmm. you can... You know, you could do this, that, and the other yeah. thing. But one thing to consider is the secondhand smoke uh, That's right. the that you're, you're affecting others with. That's right. You know, the message is out there. If you smoke, you'll get sicker and you'll have all kinds of problems in the long run. We know that. But I think that as a parent or as a grandparent or as an uncle or somebody has, you know, kids around them or other people around them, um, if you look at the fact that the secondhand smoke is causing damage to those around you, yes. especially your kids, so if you smoke in the car, and as you know, we have smoking, non-smoking legislation for cars, but if you're smoking in closed, confined quarters at home, or really somewhere where the child's playing or uh, close to their child, yeah. the child's going to breathe that in. And we know that you know, kids' lungs are smaller, so it, doesn't, it takes less of a dose, if you'd like, right. to cause damage in the long run. Is it fair to say that people in general, and especially smokers, really don't understand the full effects of secondhand smoke and how dangerous it can be? I think, I think uh, part, it's partly true. I think uh, if, you asked, if you asked me that five years ago, I'd say for sure. Yeah. I think we're getting better we're in getting terms of getting the message about out. that. Yeah. But we do know that secondhand smoke has its effects. And, you know, it doesn't have to smell smoky to, to, to be toxic. There's thousands of chemicals um, in a puff of smoke. And actually, uh, you're filtered. If you're smoking a filtered cigarette, they don't get into you as much as they get into the air. Right. And the person around you can breathe those in. And we do know that children, who, uh, children whose parents smoke in front of them uh, have higher rates of asthma, respiratory infections, ear infections, and probably a, a slightly higher rate of lung cancer in the future. Would it be also fair to say that uh, children of smokers and, and uh, you know, like you say, uh, adults who smoke in front of their children, are they more likely to smoke themselves? Well, you know, children uh, try to imitate their parents, right, yeah. in, various, in many situations. So that's not a good, as a role model as well. So there are multiple reasons. So I know that we have all these programs. You can go on our website. You can go to your local public health website and find driven to, driven to quit, you know, get all, you know, get, win a car, those type of things. But yeah. think of another incentive. You're protecting the, those around you. It doesn't have to be your, your son. It could be your nephew, your, yeah. your cousin, whatever. Yeah. There's a, you know what? There's absolutely nothing wrong with having contests or whatever you know challenges between people whatever whatever stimulates you to give up uh, a, a bad habit like that it's just fine but it should be uh, for parents especially yeah. and I know parents who've done it because of this mm -hmm. yes and, I, and I've got because parents. of their children or exactly. expecting a child exactly exactly or you know their first child is mm -hmm. born and that's it mm -hmm. right so that's a great incentive so that's why I said you know yeah you can win a car but you can also uh, win the lottery in terms of you know uh, maintaining the, the health of your children and yeah. those around you, really. Yeah, and you know what? Even if you don't smoke anywhere near your kids or you know they're unaffected by any secondhand smoke whatsoever, they could, in fact, be affected by the fact that you smoke in the end. Uh, yes, they, they may be affected by that as well. Um, right. Your health, your, your health. future. Exactly. Their yeah. future, depending on your future. Exactly, and that's why you're seeing more and more of a push now. I know Ottawa is st st studying it. We're studying it in eastern areas as well as, you know, park, you know, in parks and those areas where kids are playing yeah. um, to, to limit that as well. But uh, that's not what I wanted to really focus on. I wanted to focus on the fact that if you're smoking and if you've got loved ones around you, yeah. sm stop smoking for them as well. Yeah. Your, your health is on the line, but so is theirs. Yeah. Do we have, uh, do you have information and help avail readily available to people? I know, you know, yes, the yes. city does. Uh, and all the city, does. Ottawa Public Health, our Eastern Ontario Health Unit, eohu.ca, we've got a 10-day... Um, um, online quit smoking uh, incentive right. program. Right. Uh, uh, you can go to um, the Canadian Lung Association, Cancer Society. There's a driven to quit.ca right. website. There are resources out there, both in, in Eastern Ontario and Ottawa, and all the area you know that's watching us today, yeah. that are available for you to quit smoke uh, smoking. Either one-on-one uh, -on -one intervention or um, you know n uh, nicotine replacement therapy, a combination of classes, those t type of things. But if, if you want another added incentive, and if you've got kids and you're smoking, think of your kids. As a doctor, just this last question, as a doctor, does it matter to you how people quit? It you know, doesn't, through, through cessation aids, what? whatever? It doesn't matter. Doesn't as matter. long as they quit. Really. Yeah. As long as they quit, uh, they're doing themselves uh, justice and their kids justice. And when I was practicing um, uh, pediatrics full-time in Montreal, I was right. focusing on asthma. Right. And you, we know the Directly second, related. Oh, it was unbelievable. Yeah. And, you know, parents would fight, fight us, but then they would, they would get the message. Mm.
Listen, thanks for your information you. and your time. You ever play rock, paper, scissors anymore? <laughs> Not anymore. There, there's a ring being constructed. I know. I Did was you? wondering why that was It's a big there. match. It's a big match. The champ is in town. And there's a new lottery game, actually, that features rock, paper, scissors. We're going to have a rock, paper, scissors challenge here on the show coming up shortly. The action in the kitchen. Uh, Clifford's here from uh, Brook Street. He's getting busy in there. The control room, always busy. And Jeff Hopper, always monitoring the busyness in the control room. Stay calm, everyone. Jeff is here. We'll be back. Hour three is next.